So welcome to another video. So we're over in Burton on Trent. We are about to go inside and watch a Swindon reversed head engine be put on an engine dyno. Now I've never been in front of an engine dyno. I've seen them obviously in front of me. I've never seen one being worked and used. See what it's like. I've only ever seen them on the internet. So I'm quite looking forward to the experience. Plus being able to see what power the engine makes, how the reverse engines sound. Basically dive in, have a good look at the engine, have a good look at how it's mapped, have a look at how it performs on an engine dyno. Because this engine dyno used to do old Formula One engines. So it's absolutely bang on and it looks epic. So let's get inside and let's see what the day brings. So to put this in perspective, it was made in 1989 and it's rated for a thousand horsepower at 14,000 RPM. Imagine this little thing spinning around at that kind of RPM. Because I think I said in the intro, this used to do uh, DFB Formula One engines because that was what this place used to build was some of the Formula 1s. So can you imagine being in here with a Formula 1 engine at 14,000 RPM? Never mind listening to this Swindon engine that we're only at four at the moment. So as I understand it, it dumps water in, down, spins a, spins a turbine. Or what? water in. Yes. The water goes in, hits the turbine. Yes. You have a hydraulic flap underneath which you can close and back up the pressure to the dyno. Right. Hold that at certain RPM. Yes. And there is on this side, I get my light, you have this huge pipe with your return back to the tank. Okay, right. So technically all you're doing then is just pumping more water into that impeller to stop from spinning as you're applying load to that. Yeah. Wow, this wow. Is simple as that. And that's your, your engine coolant flow. That's the engine coolant flow and also uh, we fill and empty the coolant system through, through, that. through that as well. And the two on the gauge are here are fuel flow. Fuel, fuel, right, fuel, both, the both fuel flow. Both fuel flow. So if we run a mechanical fuel injection, that's our main pressure and that's our bleed off. I see. Yeah, so yeah. So it shows how much it's been bled back. Well. This is phenomenal, this. Proper old school. Love it. I can't wait till you start showing talk on here to show what you see mission timing. Like I say, I've never been inside an engine dyno room when an engine's been running, but my God, that's a noise. And what is also interesting is you, if anyone's ever been on a dyno, you'll have mechanical sympathy for your engine. You'll listen to it going, ah, and you'll be cringing. But this is 10 times worse because you stood right next to it. What has been mega, he's been able to look down the, uh, the throttle body ports and see the fuel spray. That's been really good. So what we're doing now is basically we're breaking the engine in the dyno. Uh, it takes about an hour, increasing, the, increasing load, just wear it in and then we'll start working basically on, on the map as the engine goes on. So, so far, so good. Oh, that's bad pressure, isn't it, in there? Jesus. So what is mega cool is, I don't know if it shows up in the video, so I've videoed where you can see into the trumpets. If you look just below the trumpets, you can see the aluminium plate where it falls to the, the uh, roller bodies. At 4,000 RPM, with the fuel plowing in, it's just starting to freeze up and uh, with ice because it's pulling moisture out the air and it's cold. Never did I think I'd see that. I think we're at 4,500 revs, we're still breaking it in, we're going to keep popping in and out. So we've just shut it off, turned it down, and you can just see all the water cooling from where it was iced up. How phenomenal is that? I suppose seeing first hand, you could probably half guess, but seeing first hand, again, every day's a school day and I love learning. So what we're doing now is, obviously the old debate that we love, uh, breaking an engine in. So normally, again, when we use uh, the normal conventional dyno, we look for blow-by 
uh, on the catch tanks and then within a certain amount of time you'll see the blow-by go off and you'll see it drop down you know your engine's running but obviously with this being a bit more i won't say technical this is probably the better way of doing it is it's a very expensive border scope and you check for obviously how much oil is getting past your rings to see whether they're fully bedded in uh, and that also allows you to see you know where if there's any bore bore scratching anything like that you can have a right good look inside the bores and see what's going on so that's where we're at now <laughs> So I've just come outside to show you obviously what the building's like. So obviously that's the giant water tank. I think it's 2,000 litres. There's the exhaust extraction. And that there is the dyno room. Which to be fair, you can quite reasonably hear some stuff outside. But inside it's quite, quite, you know, quite quiet. some people were interested last time why the base of the Swindon head let's put him over here was machined flat on on this area why was it machined level the reason being is the engine sat that far back this thing which is obviously is part of the gearbox would sit in front of the engine hence I'm having to machine some of the cylinder head for clearance <laughs> What an interesting day to come and play with the Swindon race engine uh, on an engine dyno. Never thought I'd get this experience. Anyone who has got mechanical sympathy, do not come and watch your engine on an engine dyno. You cringe all the way through. Especially, we saw 8,250. Massive thank you, thank you to MDR uh, race engines and Longman Racing for the ECU. MDR did the engine to stand in front of, see what power they make, see what numbers they are. Can't really say just yet because we haven't done the calculations. It'll come and I'm sure I'll let you guys know. All I'll say is just looking at the figures, the reversed head was definitely not down to just power because the margins are so small from a standard head to the reverse doesn't really make it. So let me show you this. It was for to get the engine far back as possible because the bulkhead sits really close there and it's easier to make an exhaust manifold than it is to design an inlet. So close to the bulkhead, have the drive shaft run in this area as you've seen with the gearbox. I feel that was the reason why they did the reverse heads for easier weight distribution further back in the car. Interestingly, with doing these videos on the Swindon racing engines, a couple of the original guys from Swindon Racing have been in touch and hopefully, fingers crossed, in the summertime, I'm gonna go and have a brew, a beer, whatever it is, and have a chat and ask the questions and get the definitive answer of why they did so many changes with the XE engine. Hope you enjoyed that. It was very educational for me. I geeked out all day. I loved it. So we'll sign this one off. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next video.